Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld, and I have a very exciting digital rebar demo for you today. Um, at RackN, we've been working on something called digital rebar provision, which is a cobbler replacement um, with RESTful APIs, cloud native uh, sort of thinking around it, very API driven infrastructure. And one of the things that we've wanted to be able to do is let you demo this without any infrastructure. Pretty hard to demonstrate an infrastructure provisioning tool without infrastructure until Packet, which is a bare metal hosting company uh, that we, we talk about, we do a lot with. Um, there's a discount code, Rackin100, uh, that'll get you some uh, credits to get started on Packet and replicate this demo. Uh, super straightforward. This is all digital rebar work. Um, what we're going to show you in a series of three videos is how you can use the new digital rebar provision, so our standalone provisioning utility, to go and provision servers with custom uh, kickstarts or pre-seeds into packet infrastructure. And we'll, we'll walk you through what those processes look like. Um, this is uh, packet, packet.net. And the instructions that we're going to be following are, are straight out of this digital rebar provision infrastructure. And we have a quick start link right here uh, that we're going to follow. So let me get some infrastructure from Packet. So this is our Packet account. I've already built a PixMe uh, host. That host is, uh, I'll show you what it looked like to build it. It's very straightforward. It would be PixMe like this. I just selected a type 0, which is their small, very small server. Uh, technically, you could actually provision this server in Amazon. It's just a, a HTTP, TFTP endpoint. Uh, not Amazon. You're going to have trouble getting uh, uh, TFTP, which is the initial provisioning. Actually, it's all uh, iPixie, so you could do this out of any web server. And then you'll pay for the bandwidth, of course. And then I'm, I would I picked Sunnyvale, and I went ahead and deployed it. That's what this this first server, uh, picks me is about. And so, so you don't have to wait for that to come up. I already have it running. I'm going to jump over to a console, show you exactly what that looks like. So, this is um, the server. I'm going to jump in over here, and pretty straightforward. There's nothing on it at all just a basic type 0 server and what I want to do is grab this curl bash line um, that's going to download the zip file uh, with all the the DRP components in it we build for Linux Windows uh, and Mac so you could do this on any of those target platforms although Windows is a little trickier uh, and then what I want to do is not just use the um, the stable for this demo I'm gonna actually pick from the tip so uh, DRP install uh, the ver uh, sorry sorry DRP version equals tip so this will come in and then install bring down the tip version instead and there's nothing pre-staged on the server at all I am I am truly bringing down all of the bits and pieces that that I'm going to need to do this every step of the way uh, so that includes our discovery images everything like that so it's running here it's almost done. Uh, extracting a couple of, of files based on detecting the operating system. And at the end of this, it'll give me some advice about what my next steps are. Now they're in the docs too, of course. We work very hard to make the docs complete. Uh, it's all API-driven infrastructure. So you, we have Swagger specifications, we have a, uh, Golang CLI uh, that you can use, and I'll demonstrate a little bit here, and of course uh, a pretty UX to make these things a little bit easier. So in this case, it's telling me that my final step here is to run digital rebar provision. It's giving me the IP address of the system, and I'm just using file routes. Uh, and then I'm going to run it in the background. So I'll take that action that it recommends, and I'll run it. And it's going through the process, and it's up. I now have a provisioning infrastructure running in packet, but I haven't told it to do anything. I will actually show you what it looks like when it's running. So let's grab this static IP address. This is just the external IP address. I'm going to bring up a new Firefox window. Size it in so you can see everything. And it is a, oops, that was moving your window. There you go. Sorry about that. HTTPS, the IP address. We don't run on a standard port. 
So 8092. I'm using Firefox because sometimes Chrome doesn't like the certificates that this self-generates, so it's safer for me to dem demonstrate this for you um, using, sorry, and I want the UX, using um, Firefox. So I'm going to go ahead, I have to accept this self-signed cert. Yes, it's very dangerous. And this is the digital rebar provision UI. Uh, we changed it pretty quickly, so this is actually running from a GitHub I.O. site. Uh, it's going to take my default credentials and log me in. So a little welcome screen, first time you're using it. And in this case, you can see I can create new subnets. Do not do this in Packet. You don't have DHCP control, so this is an on-premises infrastructure. Uh, and I only have one boot environment. doesn't let me do very much. It just tells me to ignore boot requests. Uh, and machines, so let's actually install something useful. And if I scroll back up, you'll notice that it told me, hey, once the DR provision is started, I need to discovery load here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that line. And when I do, that's going to run a script that talks to the API. And you can see, because of the way we started this, all of the API activity that's being generated, you can actually see the posts as we're creating new uh, boot environments and, and pieces like that. It's all pretty handy. Um, so in this case, and one of the things that I'm remembering here is that uh, Packet, if I want to watch the boots for Packet, I'm going to need to make a modification to the system and update it. So you'll, you'll get to see me do that. If I jump over here and hit refresh, uh, now we actually have boot environments. It's going to give me scary messages. That's okay. Um, the way the system works is a boot environment is a set of templates. The actual ISO that you boot has to be uploaded and then expanded, and that's two stages. So in this case, it's warning me that I showed, you know, it, it hasn't expanded that ISO yet. So it's saying, hey, that doesn't exist. If I flip over here, uh, you'll actually watch me installing uh, those ISOs and uploading things. So it, I come back, I refresh again, and now it's, it's happy again. So these are my boot environments, the discovery one, sledgehammer one, um, are all now available for me to start using. The challenges with this, uh, these boot environments are, are not set up to show me TTY, which I want to be able to show you, so you can actually watch the boot. It's sort of exciting to do that in Packet. So, in that case, what I have to do is I have to edit, um, let's switch into my assets directory. So I have to edit my boot environment for discovery. So discovery is, is a generic template we use, and I need to find TTY. And uh, packet, instead of using TTY0, uses uh, TTY1. So I'm just switching the order in these two things. And then I want to do, so discovery is going to be our initial boot. And then we're going to actually install a new memory image called Sledgehammer. Uh, and so I, wanna, I need to do the same thing for that so I can watch it boot also. So let's see, TTY1. Zero. Great. If I had done this before I started uh, the import process, I wouldn't. I, it would have just imported them initially. I didn't do that, so I have to go in and tell the DRP CLI, which is downloaded with DRP, that I'm going to take a boot env. I'm going to update, and I need to update the boot env called Discovery and Sledgehammer. So let's start with Discovery. So this is the bootm for discovery, and I'm going to add in this bootm's discovery YAML file. Pretty straightforward. And that's literally updating the, the, the template that's used for doing that. And it tells me back, hey, this is what, what I got back. And then I have to do the exact same thing for Sledgehammer. Doesn't seem very exciting. Um, it's, we're parameterizing these features, and hopefully by the time uh, you play with this demo next day or two, it will probably be parameterized and you'll set this in one place and be done. Um, so now I've, I've updated these changes, so now those, those templates are ready to go. So now I have a boot environment that is uh, ready for Packet. So next step is to go into Packet and provision a machine that can use this server's boot environment. So here's my boot server. And what that's going to look like is I'm going to go HTTP, not HTTPS. Pixie does not handle 
pro secured protocols. That's a whole other conversation. That's an exciting one. But that IP address, 8091, so a different port, and it is default IPXC like that. And I'm going here because this shows you that I actually have an IPXC image. Now, this is a generic one. Once we build, once we actually want to provision something specifically, that becomes um, a, a secured endpoint from that perspective. So this is just a generic, hey, I, you need to get a discovery image so we know who you are. So what will happen now is I go back into packet. I want a new machine. I want to take, uh, let's see, my pixie one. We're going to just use another type zero. You could use any type you want. They have custom iPixie OS, which lets me put in this iPixie URL. So here is my working web address. It has to be a working address. Same data center. And then I'm going to manage this to turn on persistent Pixie. So I can, uh, because of the way Digital Rebar provision works, we want to go through a discovery process and then assign an image. We do not have to do that. Um, I will, in, in, a, in my third video, I'll show you how to bypass that and jump straight into provisioning an operating system. But for now, this is our, our, our demo process. And it's the one I would suggest you play with because this is exactly what you do in your own data center, uh, except you don't have to provide the iPixie. So in this case, this system's coming up. Looks pretty exciting. We're booting it. What I really want to do is watch it boot. Um, and so we have to hack pack it just a tiny bit. So we, we can get the server's GUID up here. So this is the unique identifier for that server. I can come over into this system. And I've done this a couple of times in the past. Um, so I, what I want to do is I want to go in and use their normal console process with my GUID, with SOS, the data center, and packet.net. This will give me a console, the TTY console, into that server as it boots. Um, and because I, knew I grabbed that GUID, I can use the, that first boot process. So with the TTY change and this, this feature of packet, I can actually watch it go through the boot process. So it's pretty exciting stuff. Um, takes a little bit of time, right? That server is still being provisioned. Uh, once it's provisioned, obviously, it'll, it'll be a little bit faster each time. Uh, or at least this connection part of it will be a little bit faster. So now it's booting. And I'm literally watching the Pixie boot process on packet in their remote data center. Uh, it goes through their DHCP system. And then it's going to grab their iPixie, which is then going to chain to the iPixie we just added. So it's going through that network process. And then you'll see it run Sledgehammer um, through our discovery and then Sledgehammer process. Sledgehammer is highly optimized, so it runs in memory. It doesn't install anything to disk. It's designed to be fast and lightweight. Um, and it's running it. So this is, this is Sledgehammer booting up uh, and doing its thing. I'll just take a couple more seconds for this. I'm about to stop this video, but remember, this is one of three. So in the next video, we're actually going to go in and add an SSH key. We're going to add um, Ubuntu into the system, and then we'll go through and boot it. Uh, so you'll learn a little bit more about how digital rebar provisioning works and how you can use it in packet or on your own infrastructure. So I can go in and log in. Rebar1 is the password. These are all settable things. But now I'm actually using that system, uh, and I could grab its IP address over from packet. That's not its IP address, it's ID, its IP address. And I could ping this here. So the server's up. Uh, I cannot SSH into it because my keys haven't been injected. Uh, and so, well, first it's going to say, duh, if you already log tried to log into a server with this IP address. Um, and if I try here, I can't get in, I haven't added my key. That's the next video, so hang on, uh, try this yourself, check out the next video where I show you how to actually add the keys and, and do this process with uh, public key injection and then also be able to install a working operating system. So tune back in for the next video. This is Rob Hirschfeld with RackN. Thank you.